Hey guys, this is part two to my reaction series on the video, Do Jordan Peterson doesn't know what a fact is. Uh, when we last left off, we were talking about how the differences between facts and values seems to be insoluble from Jordan's perspective and from mine. So uh, let's see where he goes with this from here. I, mean, I just, that gets translated in my brain into just more facts. You're, you're, you're just giving me the facts of human perception. Well, okay, attention. that's fine. That's, that's no problem. Right. I'm, I'm perfectly happy about that. Yeah. And then in order to act, you have to select the target of action from among an infinite number, near infinite number, close enough of possible mechanisms of action. And so what a biological organism does is take the facts and translate them into perception and action. And the only organisms that do that with one-to-one -one mapping are organisms that are composed of sensory motor cells, like sponges, marine sponges, which are composed of sensory motor cells. They don't have an intermediary nervous system. So what they do is they sit in the water and they make a sponge. They're so simple that if you grind a sponge through a sieve in, in, in salt water, it'll reorganize itself into the sponge. So that's quite cool. And the sponge sits in the water. Don't do that at and, all. And what it does... Yeah, Peterson kind of goes off on his tangents. And, you know, the example he's giving here is very elaborate and, like, specific. And this is kind of why people accuse him of being a pseudo-intellectual or, um, or uh, you know, whatever the hell pseudo-intellectual means. Um, but he really has a point here, and, he, and he's going to get to it. But th the idea is just there are animals that don't have a brain because they don't act. Um, but the animals that do act do need a brain. Um, so, and it might be there might be a reason for that so uh, let's let him make the point and then we'll dive into it a bit more <laughs> and what it does is it there's waves on it and so it those are patterns and then the sponge opens and closes pores on its surface in response to those patterns so it maps the pattern of the waves right onto its behavior with no intermediary of a nervous system but it's it can only map waves that's all it can do and it can only open and close pores that's it so it does one-to-one -one fact to value mapping. Now what happens is that as the uh, right and one even one-to-one -one factor value uh, factor to action um, mapping still implies a value system, right? Because it implies that it is a good thing for the pores to be open when the wave is coming in because that implies it's good that the sponge is staying alive. You can't prove that scientifically. You can explain why the sponge has evolved to do that and assume that value, but you can't prove that value as true. You can't prove that value as a fact, something we talked about earlier. So you can imagine how much, so you can imagine if it's true for a sponge, it's even more true for more complicated organisms doing more complicated actions, which is why we have a more complicated brain, which is, again, Peterson's point. As the complexity of a biological organism increases, two things happen. The first thing that happens is that the sensory and motor cells differentiate. So now the organism has sensory cells and motor cells, so sen senses to detect and senses to, uh, and sorry, cells to detect and cells to act. Okay, so then it can do, it can detect more patterns because it's more sophisticated at the sensory port perspective and it can do more things because it has specialized motor systems. But then what happens is that as it gets even more complex, then it puts an intermediary structure of nervous tissue in there and that structure increases in the number of layers of neurons. And what that means is that as as that happens, and as the sensory cells become more specialized, and as the motor output cells become more specialized, many more patterns can be detected. Those are roughly equivalent to facts. And many more motor outputs can be manifested. But a tremendous number of calculations have to, has to occur in that intermediary nervous tissue. And that's the structure that I'm talking about. That structure exists and it translates the patterns into motor output and it doesn't do it on a one-to-one -one basis because there are more patterns, more facts, than there are motor outputs. So what has to happen is this tremendous plethora of facts that surrounds us has to be filtered to the point where you pick a single action because you can't act, act otherwise. And so the mechanism that reduces the number of facts to the selected action is the mechanism that mediates between facts and values. And it's not simply in and of itself, it's a fact that that exists, but it isn't a simple, f that what it does isn't a simple fact. You can't, you can't explain it. Well, you can't understand why, why it. Why not? Why not? Why well, is that a fact? 
so again, that was a that was a long thing. And again, people like to accuse Peterson of doing a world salad, but I mean that was pretty simple. The very existence that there's an intermediary structure between the worlds of facts and patterns, and then your action shows value of in itself because not every single um, stimulus that comes in manifests itself into an action because you do less actions than you have stimulus. Um, it shows that you're ranking them, which shows that you're imposing a value structure on them. It's really not that complicated of an idea, but Peterson has to lay all of the groundwork for it to explain it. So if you're not paying attention and listening in good faith, yeah, it sounds a little bit like a word salad, but uh, it's pretty easy to follow. Um, if you think about it. For the same reason that you can't... I mean, these... Look, for the same reason, for the same reason that you don't know what a neural network is doing. Like, you can train well, a neural well, network, there, there, an AI there, neural there's network. A dis there's a distinction between facts and facts that we know, right? There, there is whatever is the case, right? And then there's our understanding of it and our misunderstanding of it. So there, there are many things that we think we know that we're wrong about. There are many things that we are aware we're ignorant of and there's this there's this larger always this larger space of reality that we're struggling to engage with and it may in fact be the case that in evolutionary terms I mean, we, we know it's the case that we're we have not evolved to understand reality at large perfectly that's not the sort of monkeys we are right and you could even argue that one one cognitive scientist who some of you may have heard of Donald Hoffman is arguing now, you know, very colorfully that human consciousness or the human mind is is actually evolved to get things wrong in a in fairly uh, specific ways, so that uh, so as to maximize survival, and that that was the argument I made in our first discussion. No, but 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 here no, it was not quite because there's still this still preserves the difference between getting things right and getting things wrong. He his his argument is that. Getting things truly right, having a nervous system and a, and a cognitive architecture that could really understand reality, quote reality as it is, would be maladaptive. And he has some he has some mathematical uh, demonstration of this that 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 the the true the quote true representations of reality are categorically maladaptive, and that you had that there's a certain kind of error that is, and well, I'm, not, I'm not sure I buy this argument, but yeah. the fact that you can make this argument, the fact that you can differentiate the adaptively useful misunderstandings versus a true understanding that's maladaptive, the fact that we can even talk about that demonstrates to me that we have this larger picture of what is in fact true. See, I don't really understand how Harris is defeating Peterson's point here. I'm, I mean, I don't really think that he is, to be perfectly honest. I spent 15 years of my... Uh, oops. Uh, the fact that he is explaining different theories for the calculations that the, the intermediary system takes uh, puts the facts through, just because that may or may not be true or may or may not be a system evolved to comprehend reality of in itself whatever that is, because we can't really get outside of our own perceptions to know what that is um, in any um, in any absolute sense anyway. Um, I, I don't see how this defeats Peterson's point. Peterson's point, even if the nervous system is meant to do things that help you with survival, it's still implementing a value system in terms of its interpretations. It's still picking some stimuli to pay attention to and some to not. Just because you can explain it as a fact, it doesn't mean it's not a value of in itself. Um, yeah, I mean, this is kind of the same stuff we were talking about in part one, but I just wanted to get that finished for you guys. So final verdict here. I think that Jordan Peterson does indeed know what a fact is, but he also knows that we don't interpret those facts or, or, um, confront them one to one. And because of that, that also implies the existence of values. Sam Harris agrees that we do not confront facts on a one-to-one -one basis. He realizes we put them through an interpretive sieve, but he thinks that because we can describe that interpretive sieve, that uh, that makes that suddenly turns all of the values that order the facts into facts themselves. And I think that this uh, that this conflation is incorrect. But again, just to answer the question, yes, Jordan Peterson does know what a fact is. Um, see you all next time. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that reaction. 
If you did, let me know by dropping a like. And if you want to see more of my content, please consider subscribing. Now, if you didn't like what I had to say, or if you have any ideas to contribute of your own, please let me, let me know down in the comments below. If you want to explore the broader Pangburn universe or see some more of my stuff just right now, click one of the buttons that are waving around my head. I hope to see you guys all out there engaging in the war of ideas.